tests for examination of the knee. There are multiple tests for examination of the knee, and I'm going to mention the most common ones. McMurray test. What is McMurray's test? McMurray's test is a knee examination test that elicits pain or painful click at the knee is brought from flexion to extension with either internal or external rotation. This test uses the tibia to trap the meniscus between the femoral condyle and the tibia. How do you perform that test? When performing the McMurray test, the patient should be lying supine with the knee flexed. The examiner then grasps the patient's heel with one hand and places the other hand over the knee joint. To test the medial meniscus, the knee is fully flexed and the examiner then passively externally rotates the tibia and places a valgus force. The knee is then extended in order to test the medial meniscus. To test the lateral meniscus, the examiner passively internally rotates the tibia and places a varus force. The knee is then extended in order to test the lateral meniscus. A positive test is indicated by pain, clicking, or popping within the knee joint. This may signal a tear of either the medial or the lateral meniscus when the knee is brought from flexion to extension. Lachman test. Lachman test is the most sensitive examination test for the anterior cruciate ligament injury. The ACL is located in front of the knee. The ACL keeps the tibia from sliding out in front of the femur and provides rotational stability to the knee. How do you perform the Lachman test? How do you examine the ACL injury? The patient will be lying supine and completely relaxed. Make sure that the patient hip muscles, quadriceps, and hamstring muscles are all relaxed. Bend the knee to about 20 to 30 degrees. Stabilize the femur with one hand and with the other hand, pull the tibia anteriorly and posteriorly against the femur. With an intact ACL and the tibia is pulled forward, the examiner should feel an end point. If the ACL is ruptured, the ACL will be lax and the examination will feel softer with no end point. The tibia can be pulled forward more than normal. It is called anterior translation. The Lachman test is the best examination test to diagnose tear of the ACL. The Bivet shift test it is a specific test for ACL deficient knee. Bivet shift is pathognomonic for an ACL tear and is best demonstrated in the chronic setting when there is a chronic ACL tear. On the other hand, Lachman test is the most sensitive examination test for ACL injury, acute and chronic. As we stated before, the ACL keeps the tibia from sliding out in front of the femur and the ACL provides rotational stability to the knee. Rupture of the ACL causes anterolateral rotatory instability. The pivot shift test goes from extension where the tibia is subluxed to flexion 
with the tibia reduced by the iliotibial band. How do you perform the pivot shift? Both Lachman test and pivot shift test are associated with 20 to 30 degree of knee flexion. The Lachman test starts at 20 to 30 degree of flexion. With the pivot shift, you feel the clunk at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. Remember, the 20 to 30 degrees of flexion is important for examination of the ACL. How do you do the test? The patient should be lying supine and make sure the patient is totally relaxed. With the pivot shift, the knee is in the subluxed position when the knee is in full extension. The pivot shift starts with extension of the knee and you can feel the clunk at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. Hold the knee in full extension, then add valgus force plus internal rotation of the tibia to increase the rotational instability of the knee. Then take the knee into flexion. You feel a palpable clunk on the outside of the knee at the tibia reduces. This palpable clunk is very specific for an ACL tear. The iliotibial band will reduce the tibia and create the clunk on the outside of the knee. Always compare with the other side. Reverse pivot shift test. Reverse pivot shift test helps to diagnose acute or chronic posterolateral instability of the knee. A significantly positive reverse pivot shift test suggests that the PCL, the LCL, the arcuate complex, and the popliteofibular ligament are torn. How do you perform the reverse pivot shift test? The test begins with the patient supine with the knee in 90 degree of flexion. Valgus stress is then applied to the knee with an external rotation force. Bring the knee from 90 degree of flexion to full extension. The tibia reduces from the posterior subluxed position at about 20 degree of flexion. A shift and reduction of the lateral tibial plateau can be felt as it moves anteriorly from a posteriorly subluxed position. A clunk occurs at the knee is extended. This is called the reverse pivot shift because shift of the lateral tibial plateau occurs in the opposite direction of the true pivot shift which is seen in ACL tears. If the tibia is posterolaterally subluxed, the iliotibial band will reduce the knee as the IT band transition from flexor to extensor of the knee. It is important to compare this test to the opposite side. So let's just compare pivot shift and reverse pivot shift. Pivot shift is an ACL tear. Reverse pivot shift is posterolateral instability of the knee, means injury to the posterolateral corner plus or minus the PCL. The posterolateral corner injury includes the LCL, the popliteofibular ligament, the arcuate complex, and the lateral capsule. The posterior drawer test. Posterior drawer test is the most accurate test for PCL injury. The PCL is located in the back of the knee. The PCL is the primary restraint to posterior tibial translation. A 
Injuries to the posterior cruciate ligament are not as common as other ACL injuries. When do you do the test? We do the test as part of the routine examination of the injured knee or if we suspect a tear of the PCL or if we find laxity anteriorly and posteriorly while evaluating for ACL tear with the Lachman test. Check to make sure that is not a PCL injury. Why? The PCL tear may give a false Lachman test due to posterior subluxation. How to do the test? Examination of the posterior drawer test. The test is done with the patient in supine position and the knee is flexed to 90 degree. The examiner stabilizes the foot. Next, the examiner pushes backwards on the tibia, looking for the tibia to sag posteriorly. Observe the sag that develops due to tear of the posterior cruciate ligament. The amount of translation in relationship to the femur is observed. The test is considered positive if excessive posterior translation of the tibia is demonstrated. The mechanism of injury of the PCL and ACL are different. The mechanism of injury for the ACL is the knee is extended in valgus or there is hyperextension injury. As regards the PCL injury, the mechanism is a dash board injury with the knee bent or the foot is plantar flexed. The dial test. The dial test is performed to diagnose Postrolateral instability due to postrolateral corner injury with or without PCL injury. Isolated injuries of the postrolateral corner are rare and often cause instability and various thrust. By performing the dial test, the physician can detect if there is an isolated or a combined injury of the postrolateral corner of the knee. How do you perform the dial test? The dial test is performed with the patient in the supine or prone position with both knees in 30 degree and in 90 degree of flexion. It is preferable to perform the test in the prone position. Support the thigh in position if you are going to perform the test in the supine position. An external rotation force is then applied to both feet. The amount of external rotation to both lower extremity is measured at both ankles. Testing the injured extremity in 30 degree of flexion is done to determine an injury to the posterolateral corner. Flexion at 90 degree angle will test the posterior crochet ligament for an injury. More than 10 degree of external rotation compared to the other side indicates a significant injury. More than 10 degree of external rotation asymmetry at 30 degree and 90 degree is consistent with posterolateral corner and posterior crochet ligament injury. A combined injury. The medial collateral ligament injury, the MCL injury, it is valgus stress test. How do you do that test? Palpate around the knee in order to check for an injury to the MCL. Usually, the site of tenderness and pain is above the level of the knee joint and rarely below the knee joint. 
Place valgus force on the knee, force from the outside. The best way to test the superficial part of the MCL is to place the knee in about 30 degree of flexion. With the MCL isolated and the knee flexed to 30 degree, move the knee from side to side to assess for stability of the knee. Check for opening on the medial side when valgus force is applied. Next, place the knee back into zero degree of full extension and test the stability of the MCL the same way. If the MCL appears to be loose in full extension, this will signal a complete injury to the posterior capsule or to the crochet ligaments. In addition to injury of the MCL, it is a combined injury. A valgus force at 30 degree of knee flexion will test the superficial part of the MCL which is the strongest part of the MCL. Various stress test the lateral collateral ligament injury. How do you perform the test? The various stress test checks for joint laxity on the outside of the knee which usually represent an injury to the lateral collateral ligament. Palpate around the knee in order to check for an injury to the lateral collateral ligament. Apply a various force to the knee. The LCL needs to be checked for an endpoint. Isolated tear of the LCL is tested at 30 degree of flexion. With the LCL isolated and the knee flexed to 30 degree, move the knee from side to side to assess for stability of the knee. Next, place the knee back into zero degree of full extension and test the stability of the LCL in the same way. A positive test demonstrates increased lateral joint laxity compared to the unaffected side when a various force is applied to the knee. A various instability at zero degree and at 30 degree of flexion indicates a combined injury of the LCL and the crochet ligaments. An isolated injury to the LCL will give you various instability at 30 degree of flexion. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.